Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema and Bio.com studio up here at TIFF, Mr. Pat Mills. Congratulations on having your first feature debut at TIFF. Um, it's a pretty impressive feat. Um, obviously, you've been here before with your shorts, but how did that feel when knowing that there was going to get this kind of a, a, a birth? It was a thrill. It's the kind of thing that um, you think about when you're first starting to become a filmmaker, and you're like, oh, I would love to play a feature at TIFF. And, you know, coming to the festival is one of the things in my development as a filmmaker, and it's just I used to come here that would always inspire me when I was in film school. And just to come back here and have my feature play is just a huge, huge honor, and it's something that I've been wanting for a long time, so it's actually really nice to have it happen. What's your best TIFF memory then? It's coming as coming to it. I saw a movie by Lucas Moodyson called Show Me Love, I think in 1998, and it was, uh, I think the first year I was at film school, and I skipped the first week so I could go to the festival, and it was amazing to see one of my what ended up being becoming one of my favorite movies, and to be able just to ask him some questions about working with teenagers, and, yeah. and that's always a, an area of interest for me, so it was really nice to see a movie that I fell in love with, and the director was in the room. It's just, it, it's really special for that. That's very cool. I think Lucas was here last year as well. Yeah, he was. I, with um, uh, We Are the Best. It was I really loved that movie. Film. Yeah. So good. Um, so you talk about like a teenager looking for advice. It's almost a perfect segue into yeah. the subject yeah. of this film. Right. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Nicely I can planned. try. So, um, so, you know, that, that sort of whole concept um, of this kind of former child star, um, obviously some of it's based in truth, how much of it is and how much of it is not. Oh, well, I create the character of David Gold out of my own personality and it's definitely a fictionalized version of what could have happened to my life if I didn't have a good head on my shoulders and I drank more than I do. Um, so definitely, um, it is based on me. I used to be a child actor, and I'm kind of immature. So, and I do get along very, very well with teenagers because I, uh, I feel like I'm a teenager myself most of the time. And I actually think that's really common for people who are writers or directors or artists because it, you kind of need to hold on to that immaturity to be able to do what you do. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> do you think people forget that in terms of when someone asks for advice? Yeah, I mean you can provide something that's sound and perhaps cliche, but perhaps in order to really identify truly with someone else, you need to kind of become more on their level and a little Absolutely. bit more fluid. I, I actually think that one of the things that real, real guidance counselors don't have is empathy with the other teenagers because it's been like two generations since they've been kids and everything changes. However, but if you're completely immature like I am, you know exactly what it's like to be in the headspace of a teenager so you can actually give good advice because you can completely empathize with not knowing what the hell you're doing with your life and being insecure and shy and weird or whatever it is so I actually think that one of the things I wanted to explore with the film was just giving advice and succeeding because you are on the same level as the people even though you are 20 years apart and you probably shouldn't. <laughs> it feels like that it's a good time for that, for embracing the kind of, the people that perhaps before were sitting in a corner and a little shy, now seem to have such a strong community and such a strong media presence and so many shows that focus on, you know, perhaps not the most popular kid, but as a collective, like even taking Glee as an example for yeah. how popular that has become. It's true. Whereas each of those people individually might have been a little bit shy or a little bit more uh, kind of on the outside, them as a collective has provided a really kind of powerful forum for, for all sorts of kids with all sorts of interests. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like um, filmmaking and television should explore the lives of the people who don't fit in more than the people who do. I'm certainly not interested in people who have it easy. So I like that there are these avenues for storytelling with people who just feel like total freaks because I've spent a good portion of my life feeling that way. And for you taking the transition for filmmakers that are like kind of crafting, doing shorts, getting, trying to get that step up, like what was the kind of the biggest difference that you found going from shorts to feature other than the length? Ooh. Well, I was very lucky in the sense that when I did shorts, I didn't work with very good budgets. I did, dealt with low budget. I was always putting things together in whatever way that I could. I actually found it very, I was helped happy that I had that in my development as a filmmaker because I knew that we didn't have a healthy budget to do this so I knew how to make it work. The hardest thing was just the edit. 
where you have to think about tone, you have to think about structure, rhythm, music, and it's not you're telling a story in five minutes. You have to think of like every moment of a really long form, and thankfully we spent a long time in the edit because we really needed to get that part right. So the biggest difference is just the edit is so much more overwhelming, and it you put your heart and soul into something, and when it's not working, you just want to like crawl into bed and die. And we were able to get through that, and now we have something that people are really responding to. Was there ever a question mark as to whether you would? be a part of it in front of the screen and behind the screen? Did you ever want to kind of break up those duties or was it always going to be something that kind of generated this way? No, it, we came up with me being the lead um, in the casting process. That was something that the producers kind of pushed me to do. Um, and I definitely tried to find David Gold as somebody else, but because he's so me, it was really, really challenging to find that in the casting process. Yeah. I was really fortunate because one of my producers, Alison Richards, has been my best friend since grade 10. So she was at the monitor, she knows exactly what I want out of my performance and other performances, so she was able to really help guide me and tell me what I couldn't see. So that made the process really, really easy to have somebody who knows you inside and out on set with you looking to get what you want yourself and she knows what that is. Yeah. You know? Was there ever a question as to where to shoot it and where to locate it? The film? Yeah. Um, no, we always knew we were going to do it in Toronto because it was like we wanted to work with local actors. We had we already knew where we were going to shoot. It was so low budget that it's like oh, we need to find friends' places, you know. So we needed the help of friends and family to make this work. And final question, if you could work with anybody on the planet, alive or dead, who would it be? Ooh, Sigourney Weaver. Nice. Very cool. Mm -hmm. you wanna, you, I, I'll ask you why. Um, I kind of have this weird obsession with Sigourney Weaver. I think when I saw Working Girl when I was 15, I was like, this movie is amazing. And I've always been kind of obsessed with her. I think that she's a strong woman, and I think that she should be working a lot more than she is right now. Um, and I have a role that is written for her in my next film called Don't Talk to Irene, and she actually plays God. So, so you can understand so why I would say... So Morgan Freeman. Suck it, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. It's Sigourney Weaver time. That's right. <laughs> uh, very cool. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for